had a pretty good spin. Lived a full one. I can remember it all so clearly. It was a dark and stormy night. No, wait, it was, it was a bright and sunny day. No. Anyway, it started. Back then, it was just grow, grow, grow. And I did, did, did. Best on some jeans. And now I'm settled into maturity. Yep, it's been a wonderful life cycle. You're darn tootin', Bill. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Brought to you by Moldy Bread. Everybody loves Moldy Bread. You may have noticed that you're getting older, and you might realize that you can never go back. You'll never be young again. So if every living thing is getting older and older and eventually dying, how can there be any young living things around? Well, every living thing has a life cycle. Look out! Think about it. An animal like a rabbit lives a few years. An animal like an orca whale lives close to a century. This is a bristlecone pine, type of tree that lives over 5,000 years. See, if you're a living thing, no matter how long you live, you have a life cycle. Take a look at this. It's our life cycle table of science. Now these chickens were born and they've gotten bigger and bigger. They're grown up. They laid eggs like this. These chicks were just born. This is the chicken life cycle. Birds are born, they get bigger and bigger, they reproduce making new chickens, and eventually they die. Now at first it looks like it only goes one way. And it's true, these birds will never be young again. But even though they're getting older and older, they've passed on part of themselves that's young. It's a cycle. Uh, Bill, where is that guy? Now oh, here we go. This is true for all the populations of living things on Earth. No matter how you look at it, living things are young. They grow older. Somewhere along the line, some of them have offspring. They make babies, they have seeds or spores, or they just make copies of themselves before they pass on, before they die. Everywhere you look, you see living things at different stages of their life cycle. Some are going fast, some are going slow, but they're all living and dying and making offspring. Every tree in the forest grew from a tiny seedling, and every big strong whale in the ocean grew from just two microscopic cells. So did you and I. Wild, huh? Every living thing has a life cycle. A life cycle. A story of birth, growth, death, birth, more growth, death. You want reproduction? We got that too. One life cycle to live. Experience it again and again. No! 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 I'll never eat an omelet again! No! Ah! Here's a cool experiment to see how mushrooms reproduce. All you need is a single mushroom. Use a mushroom from the store. Wild mushrooms can be poisonous. Death. Break off the stem and set the mushroom cap on a black piece of construction paper. Set it someplace cool and dry overnight. Look, people, I'm not asking for much here. All you need is a mushroom and a piece of paper. 
Check it out. These are spores. They're a lot like seeds. In the undersurface of the cap, there are tiny spores, each a single cell. A spore is a tiny little piece of a mushroom that grew and attached to the paper. Right now, they're just sitting here, waiting. But if we put them somewhere where a fungus likes to grow, like out in the woods, these spores will grow into adult mushrooms. The spore-bearing body or mushroom comes at last into the light, like dainty dancers in a pageant of fairyland. When you look at trees, you might not think they're like us. They don't run around, for one thing. They don't eat. They make their own food from sunlight without going anywhere. They just grow. Think about this. When trees go to reproduce, to make new young trees, they start out with seeds, barely bigger than the eraser on a pencil. And when humans have babies, we all start out as cells, barely bigger than the point on a pencil. Now, why do living things do that? Why do living things have life cycles from tiny or small to big or very big? <sighs> trees are big. And if a tree had to have its offspring full grown, well, trees would be huge. And it would be hard for trees to spread their offspring around. See, right now, trees get help from animals like squirrels. They carry the seeds, the nuts, to other parts of the forest. But if a squirrel had to carry a full-grown tree on its back... Death. Humans are the same way. We start out small and get bigger. Just try carrying your mother around sometime. That's why living things have life cycles. It's hard to do it any other way. See these dandelions? This one's at the end of its life cycle. But it's not really the end. These seeds will land, and they may sprout into new dandelions, which will grow and make seeds and die. Then it starts all over again. It's a cycle of life. Things are born, they grow, reproduce, and die. And welcome to another exciting episode of Life Cycles of the Diverse and Varied. Meet the seahorse. The female of this PC-minded species deposit eggs in the male's belly where they develop. And it's he, not she, whoops, giving birth to hundreds of tiny babies. If you're a living thing, if you're a living thing, and you want to have young living things, babies, birth, you can either lay a lot of eggs at once and hope that a few of them survive are selected. Or you can have just a few offspring and take really good care of those to be almost sure that they survive. Watch the neck. K selected. When living things are small, like when they're young plants or tadpoles, it's easy for them to get eaten by other species. They might get wiped out in a sudden freeze or maybe a mudslide. But a few of them are almost sure to grow up to become adults. So, living things like insects and frogs lay hundreds of eggs at a time. By the way, the ones that get eaten are a big source of food for the eaters. They help those living things keep their life cycles going. Some species, for example, our moms and dads, have babies just one or two at a time, and they protect them, uh, us. That way, almost all of us grow up. We sure do. So living things either have a lot of offspring and let them fend for themselves are selected, or they have just a few offspring, and they protect them. <laughs> K selected. You were hoping for the mudslide, weren't you? The amazing metamorphosis! Thank you. It's not how it transformed this common caterpillar from a many-legged wingless creature to a lovely winged thing we know as a beautiful A beautiful <laughs> a 
This might take a little more time. Here's one I prepared earlier. The amazing If big organisms and little organisms are all living at the same time, how do they work out how long a life cycle to have? Well, please consider the following. Well, the answer is they don't, at least not at first. See, trees need water and sunlight to grow. They're big and tough, but they all start out only this big. When they're small, seedlings, they're competing with each other and other small plants in the forest, like ferns. Plants like these can't get as big as trees. Their stems aren't made of stiff enough stuff. Their roots aren't robust enough to reach down deep in the soil. And their fronds aren't big enough to reach up and out as far as trees can. But they grow fast. Faster than trees. They compete by having shorter life cycles. While the tree seedlings struggle to grow, the fern uh, sporlings grow into big old happy green fern plants. Now some of the seedlings manage to grow fine through the low canopy of ferns. And some of the ferns manage to grow with the dappled light from above. But see, it's not just about space on the ground, light and water. It's about time. It's about life cycles. How fast they grow depends on what resources are available to them and at what time of year. See, life cycles have been worked out over millions and millions of years of trial and error, and it's still going on. That's a lot of life cycles. Thank you for joining me on Consider the Following. Most living things have something in common. Birth, growth, reproduction, and death. This weed has a life cycle similar to ours. First, it's born. Birth. She was just born. Just born. Yep. Brand new. Then it grows. It's growing. Yep, she's growing. It reproduces, grows older, and eventually dies. Death. I've got a life cycle. I've got a life cycle. It's the way of the world. It's the way of the universe. Life cycles are cool, 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 cool. Wheat kernels were sealed with dead kings deep inside the ancient pyramids. They lay untouched for 5,000 years, 50 centuries. Scientists excavated these seeds and cultivated them. They grew. The seeds grew into new wheat plants. Growth. The seeds in the pyramids must have been alive for 5,000 years. In fact, we're still getting bread from their offspring today. It just depends where you bite into the life cycle. <laughs> Abandoned before he was born Destined to be alone as a ranger This maggot was so forlorn To his mom he was just a stranger You see his brothers and sisters They'd all been eaten Their life cycles could not advance A few hundred years ago Most people believed that life could just grow out of stuff That wasn't alive Worms just seemed to appear in the wood of ships Mushrooms seemed to grow out of dead logs. Mold grew on old bread. This idea is called spontaneous generation, mm. sudden life. It's an interesting theory. But it turns out to be wrong, dead wrong. <laughs> See, a French scientist named Louis Pasteur showed that all life comes from other life. He boiled broth, soup, in a bottle to kill anything that might be living inside. He fitted the bottle with a long neck so that nothing from the air could fall into the soup. And sure enough, nothing grew inside. But when he took the neck off, 
things started to grow. Mold and bacteria, all kinds of stuff, stuff. See, there are things in the air that are at a stage of their life cycle that's invisible to us. When they fall into soup or on a piece of fruit or on a piece of old bread, they can grow big enough for us to see. All life from life. Omne wee wum, a wee wo, we used to say. What? <laughs> see for yourself whether spontaneous generation happens. Did you say spontaneous generation? That's right. I said spontaneous generation. You take two plastic jars like these, All right. and you run them under really, really hot water. Don't burn yourself. Then you put a couple pieces of banana or other fruit in both jars. Quickly screw the lid on one jar really fast, but leave the other jar open. Gotcha. Let the jar sit undisturbed for two weeks. Better put your jars outside at this point. If you're lucky, you'll see some tiny maggots in the open jar. You were lucky. That's the first stage in their life cycle. Their baby flies. Oh. In the closed jar, no flies can lay their eggs on the fruit. Zip, none. No life cycles happening in here. For a life cycle to get rolling, you need a little life to start with. Life can't just appear out of nowhere. Let me write that one down. House fly all cry in the morning. House fly all cry all day. Cute little maggot that I once knew done sprouted wings and flown far away. Kathy Fister and we're on Tatouche Island. On this island we can see lots of different organisms. Sea lions, whales, birds, and we also see organisms that live on these rocks, plants and animals. All the organisms out here have life cycles, from the whales down to the very smallest plants. They all need to grow, reproduce and die in a life cycle. We're in the middle of an intertidal kelp bed, one of the most fast-growing plants on the planet. We also see that they have a variety of life cycles. Some of them will live for a year and some will live for 20 years or more. I've tagged this nice, slimy, slippery plant with a little bright orange tag that I can come back and find month after month and maybe year after year. Biodiversity in these tide pools can be very high and see several species of fishes, anemones, chitons, limpets, mussels, sea stars, hermit crabs, all sorts of different organisms and many different species of each of those organisms. It's a little world of lots of different interacting species. The life cycle of some of these organisms still remains a bit mysterious, and how they interact throughout their entire life cycle is still a mystery to ecologists. Done sprouted wings and flown far away, and that's why I'm gonna track it down and squish it. Elephants, camels, penguins, fish, trees, people. <laughs> Even germs have a life cycle because they're living things. No matter how different things may be, every living thing is born, grows, reproduces, and dies. Every living thing has a life cycle. A life cycle. Death. Yeah, death. It's part of the life cycle. See, your life cycle is kind of like a transit system for your genes. The blueprints of yourself that you carry in your cells that you can pass on to future generations. We begin our journey here at a station called birth. We're born, we go past a station called growth, and eventually we reach the end of the line. Death. Death. But is it really the end of the line? Well, not exactly. Not for your genes. Because between birth and death, there's a transfer station. Reproduction. 
you can have children and pass some of your genes on, and they begin a journey down a whole new line long after you're gone. See, it's not about our individual lives. It's about our genes. And our genes can travel down the transit system forever. Death is just part of the life cycle. Yep, yeah, it's just one more thing to deal with. I was a baby once. Uh -huh. Those were the days. <laughs> but I grew out of it. Everything has a life cycle. Algae, amoeba, and squid. Over and over, we're born and grow and have babies and die. It's called the life cycle. Each generation continues and carries on. That's our show, thanks for watching. If you'll excuse me, I've got some case select species discrete event models to assay. <laughs> See ya! Woo. Produced in association with the National Science Foundation. Ah. Well, you might run into something big, something with a, a relatively long lifetime, like maybe oh, a mountain lion. <laughs> yeah, something big like that, a big predator. <laughs> Ah, just kidding. Bill Nye, the science guy, knows about the cycles of life. He started out a boy and became a man. But now he's a guy, he's Bill Nye, the science guy, the guy who's always asking why. This Bill is the chicken life cycle. Nye. Birds are born. They get bigger and bigger, they reproduce, die. making new chickens, and eventually they die. Now, it's true. These birds, uh, eventually Bill they die. Bill Nye, the science guy. That's right. Looks like I just said that. I'm sorry.